Here's just a follow-up video to our Zim Explorer where we created this interactive NFT called Autobahn Whisper. So here it is, uh, live now on the Hicketnunk sale, or on the site, but it's not for sale. So that's what we have to deal with now. And that you set up a swap right here. So we hit swap. We say how much we're going to uh, or how many of these we're going to do. So out of 10, how much do we want to put up for sale? I'm just putting up five for sale for now to see how it goes. And then the price per, um, price per the buying it. The very first one I put up for, I can't remember, 12, uh, maybe something like that, 12 uh, Tez. And that might be $40 or 15 Tez, $40. So anyway, Something like that. It's a bit expensive compared. Most of the, most things are going for one Tez, which is like a couple bucks. Um, it depends to some degree on how many editions that you're you're doing. It also depends on what you want to get out of the piece and and where you where you're at on on that and uh, how much you think, you think you can sell it for. Also, remember that you get percentages of royalties. So what some people are doing is they're just making lots of them and hoping that somebody's going to sell them. In my mind, if there's a thousand of them, it's sort of less likely that they're going to start selling anytime soon. Uh, if uh, we, for Zim, we did a hundred of them. I think we'll eventually get to a hundred people uh, as soon as everybody owns one for a very small amount, then somebody can start selling it for more. But until, <laughs> until they're all owned, they're they're going to be bought at the at the price. So if you only put two dollars, you're not going to make all that much. However, we can still sell things for cheap. Like I am selling uh, five of these right now uh, for I think I'll probably put something like four, maybe five. Right, why not? So five Tez is about ten, twelve, fifteen dollars. If people know what's going on with Zim and know what's going on with these collectibles, that would be fine to pay that amount that amount but i have to build that in twitter and i don't know that's hard I'm, I'm not the greatest at twitter i have to build that in twitter maybe i can contact some friends in the industry and say hey look and, and also other people who are making interactive nfts that we may know and say look look what we've got and then maybe they'll be able to collect it for that amount you can also sort of share like um buy theirs they buy yours and hey it's basically the same so we may as well get other people's if they become big then, uh, then hey, you're you're golden. You've got you've got things. You've got art that's worth money. Uh, and likewise, if you become big, then they've got art that's worth money. So it's a win-win scenario to collect other people's and and work with people who who have um, NFTs to do this type of thing. To that's maybe where swap comes in. It's almost like a swap. Hey, you buy some of mine. I'll buy some of yours, and the money is equal. A little bit of money goes to a little bit of money goes to the um, the site here, Hicket Nunk. Anyway, five is probably okay. Five tezos, about ten dollars. If I want just random people who don't even know me to buy it, then I would drop that down to one. And then they they see it, they look at it, and go, oh, "I like that. I'm gonna collect it for one." But I'm kind of hoping that I get people who know about Zim, who know about me buying these things, and not just random people. So I'm not really looking for random people. I don't really need, well. It's not that I don't need $2 from five different people, a total of $10. It's not the money exactly. It's just I'm not sure that they would then end up uh, paying attention to what they have and to selling it when there's an opportunity. You know, so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for not just a random person to buy this thing, but somebody who is going to care for it and likes it because it is a collection. That's the way I look at it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for just like I said, random person. So whatever. Five dollars shouldn't be too, or ten dollars for a person who knows me shouldn't be too onerous. And that's what we put at. The hopes are that if we can do this enough and become famous at it, then uh, they can make money by selling it. And then you make money as the artist because they've now sold it for more. So in, in a sense, they're working as your salespeople um, to sell that. That's what you're looking for. People who could sell yours in the future. Not just people who are going to enjoy it for art's sake, they can already see it. Anybody can see this. That's not the, the point 
And what we're doing here, what we're trying to do is uh, make it collectible and transfer that collectibleness. Okay, so that's enough of that. And then I hit swap. Now, when I do that, it's um, preparing the swap and then up comes my Kukai wallet. So you need to get your wallet open. And don't forget, it used to be, I don't know why they changed it. They used to have a little click thing here. It said open wallet. And then they took that away, which is too bad because that was easier. Anyway, I'm gonna confirm. So now I'm confirming there's a little bit of a, a price that goes in to set those up, but it's nothing. As a matter of fact, it's hilarious. I love it. Um, this wallet is in Tezos and it's going up and down with the market. I started with 150. I've collected a whole bunch. At one point I was up to 160. So I actually was collecting a whole bunch of things and still had more money than I had before. <laughs> but then the market goes up and down. So you never know what's going to happen here. But I've, I've started with uh, 200 Canadian, roughly 150, 160 American. And it's been fun to watch that go uh, go up <laughs> as I'm spending it. So we're back over here. I think that worked. I didn't pay attention to what continued on here, but I don't see my messages anymore. And that means that they probably got cleared. So uh, shortly, this should be up for sale. Right now it's not. Let's pop on to somewhere else and see what happens. So here's Tez. I'm not sure if I'm showing up uh, should be showing up here on the the front. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so uh, take a look at the size. So you see that another thing the the fit mode caught just the top of that, which is too bad, but it's not the end of the world. Um, this is what people see. So my size is a little bit bigger than uh, what most people are showing. Although there's there's a big one. in the preview. So there it is. Probably could have been smaller and then it's just a little bit, uh, I could have made it longer. So right now you can tell it's looping pretty easily. Bonk, there it goes. All right, and let's have a look back at it. It's still listed as not for sale. And sometimes it takes a while to pop up in there and yeah, these things happen, it'll get there eventually. I think what happens is the interplanetary file system is out on a um, bunch of different. It's out on a bunch of different computers all over the place, and it's distributed computing. So here it is: inf uh, intergalactic, interplanetary. Sorry, interplanetary file system. And therefore, sometimes it takes just a little bit of time to bring it in from wherever it's bringing it in from. If you can't find it there, it's gonna to go to another place and bring it in from there. So that's sort of how it works to make it last forever, <laughs> in theory. But there it is, interactive. Woot, 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 I can make it loop. I can scratch it. Isn't that cool? Oh, there's the, there's the issue. Look at the rollover issue. It did get caught. So because, uh, darn. You know, did get caught on it. So I might have, I, I think I'll end up leaving it. It's fine because I can collapse it at least and get it out of the way. And what about if it's big? What if I open that up? It's not on it. So for some reason, the preview, and <laughs> go figure, the preview was a different size. The preview was probably, I don't know, either bigger rectangle or something and just showed up in a different place because that's that's up up and down aligned before it was diagonally aligned. So just watch that. Now, ideally, you would want to then, I don't know, lift the interface a bit so it doesn't get in the way of that. Okay, yay! That's a supplementary video. If you missed the the zim explore on how to make this nft go on back and check that out otherwise uh don't worry lunch chat is canceled <laughs> uh, <laughs> lunch chat is canceled um but otherwise you can talk to us at uh, zimjs.com slack or zimjs.com discord we'd love to help you through any of this and please contact us there if you'd like some tez for your wallet yeah all right just give me the wallet id that's the wallet ID right there. I guess that's how you bring up your wallet, which is that. There's your wallet ID. You hit copy. 
So that copies it, copy to clipboard. It is copy because this goes all over the place. Don't, don't worry about hiding your wallet ID or whatever, that's not the point behind it. So copy your wallet ID and send it to me in Discord and I'll transfer, it's not too hard to transfer a few, or uh, a Tez to you. I'll transfer a Tez to you. That will allow you to buy this Zim NFT right here. So under my assets, uh, it will be basically free, you know, pennies. Here's the Zim NFT collectible. There's going to be uh, 100 of these. And so if you want one, come and get it. Uh, see that's, see how we had to lift that up? It was in the corner. Now it's lifted up a little bit outside of that. Same with here. Lift it up a little bit outside of that to not be in the way. Get involved. Come on, make some uh, NFTs. It doesn't have to be art exactly. It could be some, you know, it could be apps, puzzles, games. As NFTs, we'll be doing some of those as well. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Cheers.